Boy, I got to tell you, welcome to the end times. Look at this buffoonery on display. Uh, Captain Hook here with the uh, Christian band for King and Country and the Forgotten Sidekick as they dode and worship over an actual whore uh, who's made her living in the world for the last 50 years because of her uh, oversized breasts. And look at this, kissing the hand of an actual Satanist. Some of you are going to get upset with me, and that's fine. Uh, I'm offended for God. This is an absolute slap in the face. This is mockery of Jesus Christ. This is not Christian music. But today we're going to focus uh, on, I guess you can call this, the Dolly Syndrome. As more and more Christian artists apparently just need to have Dolly Parton on alleged Christian songs. So today I'll simply point out the obvious, uh, but it needs to be documented. Today's version of Christianity is watered down and unbiblical and unscriptural. Uh, it's the kind of acceptance uh, in joining forces with the world. Can you get any more worldly than this? Almost bursting at the seams. It is mocking our living God. And I'm going to prove to you that these alleged Christian singers these days, they're not Christian. There is an agenda here. And you've got to ask yourself, are you falling for it? I mean, this is ridiculous. Are we in bizarro world? Actual whores, dressed like actual whores, not even trying to hide it, uh, are pairing up with worship singers, alleged worship singers, and they're going mainstream uh, more and more to where the world is so far asleep, I shudder. So a little bit of recap. This, of course, happened on November 13th. And uh, if you didn't watch this that night for King and Country, the fakest Christian band I've ever seen, performed with Dolly Parton, as did Zach Williams. Now, for King and Country, for, if you didn't see the video I did on them, uh, they're absolute frauds. Uh, they promote a female God and have no problem with that. They, they, they say, who are we to put God in a box? He could be female. Uh, so I want to challenge all of you uh, who are getting angry and, and agreeing with them. Try saying that next time in the Lord's Prayer. Our mother who art in heaven. Try that. And then, of course, prepare and see how that works out for you on Judgment Day. Now, a point of interest, which I think you'll agree with me, further exposes these fraudulent Christian artists and singers like For King and Country and Zach Williams, is when these alleged Christian performers voluntarily wander into actual satanic ritual ceremonies like the CMAs, and they take their place in the audience waiting for their turn to perform, and you'll see them participating themselves in these rituals while they sit there and they clap and they cheer and they praise, they shower praises upon the modern country artists in this case. And it troubles me beyond belief because as a Christian, you're supposed to separate yourself from the world. You're not, you're not supposed to participate in this. And the biggest defense that you'll see is, oh, they're bringing the gospel to the world, but they're not. <laughs> they are not because if they were, uh, they wouldn't be clapping and cheering and kissing hands and slapping butts and all that other stuff. Right now you're looking at a picture of a band called Little Big Town, and they sang a song called Girl Crush. And so the remarkable part for me is to try to understand how any Christian artist or somebody who proclaims to love Jesus can sit out there while a band like this performs a song called Girl Crush. And let's take a look at the lyrics. Here it is. The song is Girl Crush, and a girl is singing. I've got a girl crush. Hate to admit it, but I've got a heart rush. Ain't slowing down. I got a real bad want everything she has. That smile and that midnight laugh she's giving you now. I want to taste her lips. Yeah, because they taste like you. I want to drown myself in a bottle of her perfume. I want her long blonde hair. I want her magic touch. Blah, blah, blah. It keeps going. And... A lot of idol worshipers, deniers of Christ, will say, well, this is just allegory. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, right now, because of this band, there's 10 million girls, country fan, uh, country western fans, singing this song. And what it does is it opens up a doorway. Might not happen tomorrow. Will happen. It's, it's a promotion of 
LGBTQ, lesbianism, and it is certainly antichrist. But your alleged Christian boys sat through the whole ceremony and they condoned it by not walking out, by not being offended for the living God, by not uh, taking a stand in the truth of Jesus Christ. They're participating in it. They're, <laughs> that's a red flag. Hello. All right, so what's the big deal? Why can't these Christian artists go to these satanic rituals? It's sad that I have to explain this. If you come to the book of James chapter 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Break this down, please. Friendship with the world means not a good thing. You are the enemy of God. Please, please let that absorb and think about that. Because if you can't figure it out, this is what it means. This is the doctrine that's being brought forward by Christian musicians. It's okay to be friends with the world. We've seen it with Lauren Daigle. Let's be friend with all, friends with all the homosexuals. It's okay. Never mind what the Bible says about separating yourself from the world. Let's get together with the world, party with the world, live with the world. And this is the danger. Boy, are we here right now. A couple of things I'll point out to you as we take a look. Now, this is a video by Zach Williams. The story behind the song, There Was Jesus. This is the song uh, that he had to have Dolly Parton on. So he gives a little backstory. It's a, it's a uh, minute and 17 seconds long. I want to show you, you can see where I've already submitted my thumbs down. But look at the ratio. Now just try to keep in mind the numbers, the statistics. Uh, 352. If, if this was a survey, for example, let's add this together, 357 total votes here. The vast majority approved of what he's done here, partnering with the world, while very few object to what he did here. What, what's a good reference point of that? Well, let me show you. If you come over to the book of Matthew in chapter 7, this is a true testimony. Look what Jesus himself says. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And who finds it? Few. Few there be that find it. Again, look at the stats. Is the Bible dead on perfect accuracy or what? Few there be. The majority will approve of silliness and Satanism and folly like this coming from alleged Christian singers. Now, if you watch this video, and I'm not going to play because I, I know they'll hit me with a copyright. But during this is, is this is Zach Williams. Because <laughs> I, I can't even, I can't even believe that I, that I hear these things. He tells of the tale of writing this song. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, he, he looks at his producer and says, hey, you know who we should get or who would be really great for this song? Dolly Parton. And I'm like, what? If you're thinking of Dolly Parton to put a, like I said, an actual worldly Satanist who's made her living off of her breasts for 50 years, that's who you want to get on your Christian song to God? Dolly Parton, what's going on in your mind, dude? That's, again, bizarro world. I imagine that would have been the equivalent. Uh, it wouldn't have surprised me any more if you would have said, hey, uh, hey, producer, dude, do you know who we should get to sing on this Christian song to God? Ozzy. Dude, Ozzy would so be into this. He would love it. Dude, if we could just get Ozzy to sing on this, it would be totally epic. Again, Bizarro world. It goes to show you, though, segue into what? Agenda. There is an agenda being put here. It really means this. This guy isn't in love with Jesus because no person that's in love with Jesus would ever go, dude, we need to get Dolly. It's ridiculous. That means the real story goes, Look, I wanted to be a singer. I couldn't make it in the secular world. The next best choice was to try to rise through mainstream Christianity music. And they tell me what to do. 
So the producers behind the scene said, dude, you're going to do a song with Dolly Parton. Shut up and play the music we tell you to play. And that's going to be that. And you'll still have your fans screaming your name and slapping your butt and telling you how great you are. That's what it is, folks. That's what it's been since the beginning of time. Music moves the masses. And you're seeing it full on attack here in the end times. I'm telling you, you better examine yourself. We're in the book of Jude chapter one if this doesn't perfectly describe what's happening boy i don't know what does beloved when i gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should what earnestly contend for the faith does it say for the multiple faith no there is only one faith and you are to contend for it at all cost which once was delivered unto the saints why well here's why for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men. And what do they do? They turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Bro, this is what's happening. Wake up. It's okay if you turn that nasty, fake Christian music off. Stand in the truth of Jesus Christ. You want the truth of Christ, here it is. It's all in the Bible here. You don't have to listen to this filth as they further mock our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For those of you that love Jesus Christ in all truth and sober-mindedness, God bless you.